I wasn't going to do it this year. I really wasn't. I wasn't going to let my mind wander and hear the siren call of some old song that popped on my heart strings and then play it here. I had this service all set up and ready to go without that song at all. The only thing I needed to change was to move Ocano County Manual from their very front of the service to where we listen to it because it's closer to the gospel and it works a lot better there. As I was listening, you know, to Ocano County Manual, which echoes the announcement of the birth of a child to a virgin that we celebrate, those ancient words of Isaiah, I thought of what Emmanuel really means. You've heard it already in this service. Emmanuel means God is with us. My favorite part of the Advent Christmas season are not really the Christmas hymns, although this is one of them. It's O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. This has been my favorite part of the season for over 25 years, which is really strange. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel is one of our most ancient Christmas hymns that expresses our ancient longing for relationships. For God to be with us, and for others to be with us, in very real, meaningful ways. We were created to be in relationship with God and others. By ourselves, most of us are lonely people. Three Dog Night is right, one really is the loneliest number. While the lyrics of one aren't very sophisticated, they do convey the loneliness we all experience at times. It seems loneliness has been part of our human condition from the very beginning. When God finished creating in the first creation story, God looked at all that God had created. You know what God said? Wow! Well, he's probably going to say, wow, I would love if I was God. Wow! It's very good. Each of those preceding days of creation, God would look at it and say, it's good. But when he finished all of it, he said, it's very good. However, it wasn't long before God looked at Adam and said, it is not good that man should be alone. It is not good that man should be alone. It seems Adam was lonely. Now the real tough guy part makes it like poor Adam, you know, get over it, heal it. On the other hand, I think we all know that lonely feeling. And so God created the helpmate for Adam. And no, it was not a dog, guys. It was a woman. Okay? So you're blessed with women in your life, your mother guys, because God doesn't want you to be lonely, to be loved and cared for. Right, Mom? Not even Jesus could escape loneliness. Loneliness is the first feeling that people are in the Bible. Adam is lonely. Then when you get to the new Adam that's sent to save us, even Jesus was lonely. Jesus' last words as he hung dying on the cross were, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He felt like even God had abandoned him. Jesus decided that on the last night of his life, as he was really struggling with what was going to happen, the way he was going to do, wept his heart, and he said, Stay with me and pray with me. Do you remember what they did? They all fell asleep. And then when the chips were down, they all jumped ship. They all abandoned him. And so in the last hours of Jesus' life, not only his closest friends failed him and abandoned him, but he felt like God also had abandoned him. What a lonely experience it must have been on that cross. The past 10 months have been a painful reminder for most of us that it's not good for us to be alone. We've been created to be in relationship with God and each other. The social distancing we've had to observe out of concern for public safety, safety has left many of us feeling isolated and lonely. The isolation and loneliness have taken a toll on all of us in many ways. My life's filled with people. I really like my alone time, sometimes with the dogs, sometimes I don't even want dogs, but I just want to be alone. I noticed a few months ago, I just kind of felt beat up. My energy level was really low, which is kind of strange for me. And I thought, what's going on? Am I sick or what's happening? And then it dawned on me, because most of you know I'm an adrenaline junkie, and I like to be very, very busy, and I like a challenge. 
And I thought to myself, this is stress? And usually I like stress. And I thought to myself, this is the stress of having to live in Hilton where everything is more difficult to do. Everything we do in the church is a challenge. And when your job involves being with people all the time, many of you know it's really difficult to be safe and to get down when you need to get down. And so the isolation and loneliness was even taking toll on me. It's been hard for those of us who are accustomed to gathering with others of faith to worship God through singing, reading, praying, communing, shaking hands, hugging, to not be able to do so. Most of you know my favorite part of worship is what happens back there, both before and after worship. You know, all that chitter chatter that happens, the crying, the sharing stories, the jokes, the laughing, the hugging, shaking hands. Right now, we can't really do any of that, can we? I mean, it's not safe. We need to protect ourselves. And it's hard not to do so. It's been hard on people who are old and have health conditions that make it even more important for them to socially distance from others. It's been hard for all of us not to be able to be with each other in the many ways that we're accustomed to being with each other. Our experience over the past 10 months has been a powerful yet terrible reminder that we're created to be in relationship with God and relationships with each other. We grow lonely and we long for someone to just come and be with us. There are times when I wonder if loneliness is the reason we're here. I wonder if God was lonely and decided to create us because God longed for relationship to someone to love. If you paid attention at reading, you know, the second one we had tonight, first John, where the author of that letter talks about God being love. He didn't know what love's like, huh? I mean, when you love, it doesn't make a difference what you love. You want to reach out and touch somebody's life to care for them, whatever it is that you love. And so it's hard to love by yourself, isn't it? Love always means an object. And so many of us believe the reason we're here is because, and it's not a really spring, God was lonely, and God was love. And so God created an object of God's love, and here we are. There are times I wonder if God's like us who have kids who sometimes look at them and think, why in the world did I ever do that? Imagine God has that experience too, but love they will get us through those times also. Do you understand why, O come, O come, Emmanuel, connected with my loneliness? O come, O come, God be with us. And triggered my memory of one by the three dog night. I grew up in that area, can't escape those songs at all. There are times in life when we can be surrounded by others and still feel all alone. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Like no one really understands you, or sees you, or gets what you're feeling. While God has always been and always will be with us, it seems we have a deep need for God to be with us in the flesh. God was with Adam, yet Adam was lonely and needed someone like him to be with him. God understands us and blesses us with the gift of each other and the gift of Jesus. The Word became flesh and lived among us. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. There are many, many lonely people during this Christmas season. Christmas is always one of the loneliest times of year, but this year is going to be especially bad for many of us, isn't it? Because we're not able to gather with all those people that we're touching, gathering with, and doing those things that bring joy to our lives. I'm certain many of you understand that loneliness we're experiencing. I know I am. Most of us long for our lives to be filled with others, laughing, drinking, eating, just being together and experiencing the joy of spending time with each other. That's probably not the way it will be for many of us this Christmas because of the threat of COVID. It's good to be here this evening, but the way we have to worship this evening is far from the way we really want to worship. Most of you have heard me sing, it's not very pretty, but I really, really miss it. There's something that singing does for us, that touches our hearts. And to sit and listen to these songs, as beautiful as they are, it's like, wow, I just want to spell out whether I'm off key or not. That's the way life is often is, isn't it? I mean, we would like it to be 
be like that. And here's the reality that we have to deal with now. However, there is good news this evening. The good news is that God sees our loneliness and knows our loneliness and comes to us through the gifts of each other and Jesus to remind us that God is always with us, that we are never alone, that he understands what's in our hearts, and he's going to stick with us through anything that can happen. I long to be together again with all our brothers and sisters in Christ who gather for worship here at Zion, at Holt Lutheran Church, the Church of the Damascus Road with two prison congregations, and Christ Lutheran Church. I look forward to the days we can take our masks off, shake hands, hug, laugh, cry, tell the story, and sing. The past ten months have been a painful reminder for me of how important it is to gather together with brothers and sisters in Christ to do those very things. This time of isolation and loneliness has also challenged me to not forget that God is with me every moment of my life and to seek the comfort God provides me in the midst of my loneliness and isolation. You see, we are never truly alone, even though we often feel that way, because God is always with us. The most frequent promise in the Bible is that God is with us and always will be. God will never leave us alone, never. That's what Christmas is about. It's about Jesus coming to us to say, look, the kingdom of God is here. God is with you. Repent and believe in the good news. It's about Emmanuel, God with us. God comes to us in the flesh of Jesus and each other, but God also comes with us in mysterious, powerful ways to comfort us when we're lost. When I feel lonely and long to be together with my brothers and sisters in Christ, I say to myself, you know, it really sucks not to be able to be together with other people the way I always like being together with other people. But I'm not alone. God is with me. Then I take time to focus on God's presence with me. See, if I don't stop and think about it, it's easy to forget that God is with me. The most important thing I normally do is pay attention to my breathing. Life came from a breath from God. Life came for that first human being from the breath of God. I take a deep breath, hold it, let it go, and I just think, wow. We're alive because we breathe. And that breath is a blessing from the power of greater than us. And in spite of the loneliness and the isolation, what an incredible experience be alive in the fullness of what it means to be alive. And then I remind myself that God is with me, God is always going to be with me, it's all right. And God never disappoints me. I am always comforted with a sense of peace and hope. May we use this time we're spending in the wilderness of the loneliness and isolation to remember God's promise to be with us and be blessed with the comfort and peace that comes from being aware of God's presence. The day will come when we'll be together again and be able to take off our masks, shake hands, hug, laugh, cry, sing, and do all those other things we want to do. And what a joyful day that will be. As sad as this Christmas season is, may it be a reminder of Emmanuel, God with us. That's the ancient cry. God, we're lonely. Come and be with us. And God says, I'm with you right now. Rejoice in that. May all of you be blessed with the comfort and peace of knowing Emmanuel's kindness. And God is with you now, and God's voice will. Amen.